So here's a tap auger. We only have a little bit left this bottle, but it's enough to do an overlay. We're gonna send you bottles with 50 milliliters of this. So that should be enough for about um, five or six. So we're gonna microwave this to, to melt it. I recommend you take the top off and just put it back on, but not tighten it at all, okay? So, so basically take it off and just put it just resting on top. We have this microwave set at 20% power. I recommend that you probably only do it about 30, microwave it 30 seconds at a time. And if you're doing it on full power, only maybe 10 or 20 seconds at a time. As soon as it starts bubbling, immediately stop it. And then check to see if it's liquid, okay? Um, never ever microwave at full power or any power with the lid tightly capped. And like I said, best not to do it at full power at all. Just gonna check it, see if it's liquid. Yeah, I still see a little bit of uh, solid stuff on there, so I'm gonna heat it up some more. I just start up again. I think it's beginning to bubble. Yeah, it was bubbling just a minute ago. I want to heat it up until I get all these little pieces of unmolten auger liquid. So eventually we did get the auger melted. I'm sorry that wasn't captured in the video, but once it starts to boil and you see it bubbling, immediately stop it, shake it up a little bit, uh, make sure that you know it doesn't get capped. And then we moved it into the, um, the water bath. Okay, so the temperature you want to shoot for is about 45. My water is a little bit cooler, but my auger is pretty hot. So I'm just going to stir it until it comes to temperature, monitoring the temperature. It's a little bit cool. I wish it were a little bit warmer, but the, my hot auger is going to warm the water up as, as it cools down. Again, you should probably be doing this with an oven mitt or something if you have a lot of auger because the heat will come up the bottle it will be hot so if that's the case use an oven mitt right now my, my top of my bottle is cool enough that it doesn't it's barely warm it's not a problem at all it still looks liquid we just want to make sure it's not going to be so hot that it'll kill the rotobacter be, uh, before it goes on the algae plate okay so here I got my two algal plates. They're a little bit more overgrown than I would usually do, but this is just for a demonstration. So remember to take the parafilm off first. Okay. And we're gonna do two overlays. We have just enough top auger to do two here. Okay. So you should have two 15 mil falcon tubes like this. I call falcon tubes, although these are actually corning, but sticks. So we're going to do six mils of top auger and six mils of the rhodobacter culture. This is the rhodobacter. So you should have a culture of bacteria that looks something like this. This is the sensor strain. So I'm going to pour in about six milliliters. That's a little bit too much. I'm going to pour a little bit back. You can do that because there's nothing else in there now. If you won't be able to put the top auger back. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, now this point you have to work kind of quickly because as soon as the top auger mixes with the rotobacter culture, it's gonna be cooled down by mixing with the cooler culture and it'll immediately start um, setting up. So I'm gonna bring it up to 12 mils total. this quickly. Mix it so it's completely mixed up. You don't see any zones that are darker or lighter. And then immediately pour it on top of the plate. I would pour it on the area that doesn't have cells. And then move it around gently so it covers all areas. Cover it. 
push it to the side so it doesn't get disturbed and leave it on a nice flat area so that will set up. Okay. Okay, I've already poured about six milliliters of my sensor culture into another tube. This is the second one I haven't done. And now I'm gonna pour the top auger in. It's a little bit cooler now, so we have to act kind of quickly. And oh, we're gonna use every little bit of it. It's gonna be a little bit less than we thought. this well. Hopefully the auger will be still high enough concentration and set. Might be a little bit more liquid than usual, but should be okay. Pour it out. Uh, you see, I got a little bit of auger already in the middle there. Just make sure it all gets poured. As long as that bit of auger is in the area with no cells, it's going to be okay. And then there we go. All right, so we're just going to leave these alone. I would let them, leave them alone for at least half an hour, if not an hour, so that the auger completely cools down and sets. And after that point, you're going to put it under, I would probably parafilm it, and then put it under whatever conditions you want to grow the algae at. That's the conditions in which they're going to make hydrogen now, and those are really um, where the rotobacter will be sensing that hydrogen. So, um, at this point, we're going to wait, and then we're going to put our plates wherever we want to incubate them. And that's kind of up to you how you do that. You want to put them in light and dark, medium light, high light, however you want to do it. Okay? All right. And the next video will be about how you image the fluorescence the next day.